Hello everyone and welcome to this week's update video. In this week I am joined by Thomas Jampas, the lead designer at Keen Software House. Hello. He is currently working on the Planet's design look and feel. So Tomasz, what can you tell us about the progress on the Planets? Well, the Planets for Medieval take a little bit different process than the Space Engineers ones. And that's mainly because players cannot fly, they can build flying machines. So we are trying to think of, let's say, adding a lot of detail to the surface. So there's something interesting every once in a while. And this kind of brings a lot of different, like let's say, processes that we need to go through. Like let's say, uh, some tile system, ways to kind of add the details, but still in a way that we don't have to handcraft every single area, because we just would never make it. It's, it's too many, the plants are quite large, even though it doesn't look like it. And we are trying to find a process where we do have a control over the areas, but still there's a lot of random stuff going on. Okay, um, so what, how, what can you explain a little about the current design approach? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are working on this specific like tile system, mm -hmm. but the tiles, they have like many different layers. Each layer is focused on something else. You have layers that, for example, define completely fl flat areas. You have layers that define large mountains, mm -hmm. and let's say they define roads. So the layers are not like something, or the tiles are not like something that would be, let's say, set in stone. It's more like, like a package of data that we are going to use in World Machine to actually generate the final height map. And this way we kind of achieve the goal where we actually have complete control over what's happening, but we still have this like random areas and approach where, for example, if you have tile with like specific mountain, even though the tile is going to be six times on the map, the mountain is always going to look different. Ah. So if you look at this picture, um, can you explain a little about the, the tiles? Uh, basically what we are looking at right now is like the smallest detail on the, on the tile. And one of the main focuses was to kind of make sure that if player like claims an area, that he can kind of like predict where, should, where the defenses should be. Like where's the hard area for attacker to like let's say go through, mm -hmm. and uh, on the picture on on the bottom you can actually see uh, like like simple sketch of how the castle could be done. You can actually see that there are, there's actually a road connected to the castle, and there are like two small gates that uh, that basically uh, are all the defenses the castle has in in let's say the first sector, and the idea is that when player claims an area it kind of gives him a specific advantage. And well, in this case, this is really like the specialized area and they, they won't be everywhere. Those will be, let's say, I don't know, like five times in, in a region. And that's about it. Player will be able to build castles anywhere, but if he decides to go for one of these areas, then it's going to be to his, to his benefit. I see. So you would say that this is the, the same principle, but on a larger scale? Yes, exactly. This is like a, another layer of, of the tile where you can actually see that we are focusing on different heights of the areas. We kind of want to make sure that you have different, let's say, uh, areas that are connected in many different ways. So that, for example, player might have a big uh, advantage by being like, uh, let's say, really high compared to, to other areas and kind of have like the overlook over the areas. Mm -hmm. It has more mechanics connected to it, but we don't want to talk about it now. And uh, what you see right here is kind of uh, like, let's say, old design that we lately developed into, let's say, using specific lines and different features to define the areas. But the idea behind it is the same, to kind of create different uh, layer heights and all that stuff behind it. Mm -hmm. So, can you give us an example of one of these uh, one of these tiles? Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually like the latest latest idea that we had, and that's basically forming the terrain through lines. And each each line has its its has its specific purpose. Like the ones on the top, you can see that they are like zigzag, and that's basically line defining the road. And the idea behind it is that to make the surface more interesting but yet to control the the areas 
uh, the roads are going to be projected on the surface that's going to be, uh, let's say, defined by other lines. This way we are able to make sure that the, that the roads are suitable for, let's say, pushing a cart or a catapult. And still, we have control over where they are and what angle, uh, under which angle they're, they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Then you have those little squares that basically we call them like floating islands. Mm -hmm. And those are the areas that actually are going to hold the stuff that you saw in the first picture, which means the little tiny, like, cool spots for, for the castles and fortresses and stuff. And then, the, then you have, like, lines that define the high mountains and low mountains. And all these are, like, data that would then be imported into World Machine. And by assigning specific values, we would actually achieve what you can see on the next picture, which is basically the exact same thing as you see on the top, but with added effects and uh, added, uh, like let's say, yeah, the, the yeah, effects Yeah, I, I itself. like how natural it looks. Um, when I first saw the concept, I was worried it was going to look super artificial, mm -hmm. but it looks really good actually. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we are still looking for the best values and for the kinds of tiles that we want to go with, because like the more tiles we would have, the more unique areas we would build. But as I said, we are still looking for the best values and to kind of make the environment that is very interesting for the players still looks natural, but it's, it's fun to play in. Hmm. Now, you kept mentioning uh, a few times these roads. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us about the roads? Uh, well, we were kind of thinking of like navigation points that would work for the players and roads kind of serve best in this way because we wanted uh, the, the, the landscape and planet kind of look alive and all these roads would actually connect specific areas. They, uh, we can actually create some, something like focus points where we can place specific stuff or like castles or something and then it's easy for a player to find it because the roads will always lead somewhere and they will be done in a way that is easy to use them and also other players can use them to let's say build different castles in different areas that are already connected together. So their main point is kind of give a clue to the player of where to go, what to do. And in some cases the roads can even like help you to cross difficult mountain or let's say difficult rock or something. And it could actually create something like a choke point that is easy to defend. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's, there are many different uses that we are still kind of trying to figure out. And, yeah, and it helps and make the planet feel more alive. Yeah, it's cool stuff. So is there anything else you would like to mention about the planets? Well, I think that's about, that's about it. It's just that we almost have kind of like the concept, core concept done. Now it's about finding the best values and kind of find the, the best feeling for the planet itself. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of information about the process of how we are now building the planets. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your comments. So we'll see you all next week. Goodbye.